A very warm welcome to you all to the one-on-one -on -one set. Tonight, our conversation will revolve around poetry and literature. Our guest, Lina Ukel Chakuri, who is in fact in the medical field, has recently published a collection of poetry of Whispers and Bridges. And tonight, during this episode of One on One, Lina is going to share with us her passion for creative writing. Lina, thank you so much for joining us in the studio of the NBC. Thank you for inviting me, Koyal. Lina, you've uh, published recently a collection of uh, poetry uh, of Whispers and Bridges. But first, share with us, how did you develop uh, this passion for creative writing? Take, take us down to your journey. So, uh, I owe my love for writing to my mother. She inculcated the love for reading for me right from my childhood. She would bring books to me and she would read them out to me. And then later she would tell me to read them out. So then uh, so gradually books became my uh, companion. And uh, so if I t uh, start with my journey with writing, I started with writing in a diary. So I would write snippets of my thoughts on and off. So it was mainly a waxing and waiting uh, phase. Then I, I went for my medical studies. I took a pause for five years. And after the five years, I revisited this diary and it was like a piggy bank of poems. And I realized that this is such a beautiful collection. So my first step, my first milestone was uh, going on social media. I set up my Facebook page, uh, which is named Sunkist Inc. And I started posting my uh, poem, sometimes the whole poem or sometimes one paragraph. And uh, actually, initially, I was publishing Incognito. I, I was using Sunkist Inc. as my pseudonym for two reasons, actually. First, I was not ready completely to be out there that I am the yes. one uh, writing these the pieces. And secondly, I wanted people to like uh, my uh, written content yes. for the content of it, not because they knew me, not because they are acquainted to me, then they will like or react to what I am writing. But later, uh, the page gained momentum, I gained followers, and I saw that I got very good feedback for my writings, and then I identified myself as the admin of Sunkist Inc. And it was very well received. I would uh, meet people, my friends would tell me, oh, so you are Sunkist Inc., you have been writing these things. And it really warmed my heart. So from uh, my first milestone on social media, then I started uh, joining online poetry groups. And I used to write on certain prompts and everything. And uh, this culminated into my uh, being published in certain anthologies, along with other authors internationally. And finally, I g got into my own uh, publication. My solo publication is Of Whispers and Bridges. That's been quite a journey, right? Yes, quite a journey. Yeah. So it was someone who was in a nut, uh, like uh, trapped in a shell, being behind a pseudonym, to someone who is now basking in the limelight yeah. of her Indeed. published book. But I think you're right, you know, many individuals, you know, they possess that talent for writing, but somehow they are scared yes. to come out because mostly they seek validation, you know, mm -hmm. for others to appreciate their work. Yes. But it shouldn't be that case. Yeah, they as, should as take you're the confident. Leap. Yeah, you should take you the leap. Yes. But when you're taking the leap, you should be like ready for both uh, good feedback and criticism alike. But Lena, what does writing represent to you? Is it a way for you to to convey your emotion? to try to influence the way a particular person think, the society? What does it re really represent, uh, you know, yes, to you? Uh, writing is a way for me to convey my thoughts, to put forward what I'm thinking in, uh, like, uh, in certain uh, short form. But the beauty of poetry is that it's a short uh, form of writing. In few words, you can say many things that can have a deep impact. And... Uh, Secondly, uh, writing is also a form of therapy for me. There was a time when writing was a kind of a healing process for of me. Uh, writing kept me grounded in the face of uh, certain situations which were beyond my control. And I'm glad that I kept at it. And finally, the project is a, a book. Yes. Yeah. So this is a good example of, you know, two negatives becoming a positive. Like you use... Uh, the stones people hurl at you to make building blocks. So writing is a very good uh, 
way to uh, re relieve your pent out uh, emotion, your bottled up emotion. But uh, in the same, at the same time, when you're writing it, you're conveying your thoughts, you're putting your thoughts forward so that uh, other people can read. And they can, uh, the beauty of poetry is that you are writing it, you are writing something, but other people, they are analyzing, they're interpreting it in their own uh, I think, Yes, way. indeed. That's yeah, the beauty, I, that's I beauty. feel, yeah. of a poetry, of a, you know, any type of writing, because it is open for, for interpretation. Yeah. yeah. And now your, uh, your recent book, your first book, shall we say, mm -hmm. uh, of Whispers and Embridges, what is it exactly about? How many poems does it contain? And uh, how was, you know, the whole process of writing those poems? So Of Whispers and Bridges contains almost around 80 poems. And the poems, it's, it's a really a potpourri of uh, different uh, themes and topics. I haven't limited myself to one type, one theme. So it ranges from nature, love, motivational pieces, feminism, so it it uh, obviously and bridges has something for everyone. Yeah, anyone you will pick up the book, you will uh, find something which you connect with, which yeah. you resonate with. Uh, like for example, if you're feeling low, you want some motivation, you can go. Uh, there is one uh, chapter which is follow your light, which has motivational pieces. Or if you are so, a nature lover, the first chapter treasures on nature will interest you. So it has something for everyone. And secondly, uh, in Office of and Bridges, I have explored uh, diverse uh, form of poetry writing. I have used poetry, poetry techniques. So initially, I was writing in free verse poetry. Free verse poetry is a traditional way of writing, which does not follow any uh, rhyming scheme or any form of a syllabic count. But you have other poetic forms, which I have included in the book, like haiku, which is a Japanese form of poetry, rondelle, which is from, Fran from France, and rispetto, which is an Italian form of uh, poetry writing. These follow a certain rhyming scheme. So when you're writing in these poetry, uh, poetic uh, devices, you're using these, it's become slightly more challenging to write your poem because now you're limited. You're limited by a rhyming scheme, you're limited by a syllabic count, but it's fun at the same yeah. time. So you prefer writing uh, in the style? Yes, uh, it's more fun and uh, when, when you have completed the poem, you feel it's another uh, sense of satisfaction. And you know, when you're, you're following a rhyming scheme, when you read out the poem, it gives another feel also. Yeah. But was it draining while writing those 18 poems? How much time did it take you to complete all of it? Share with us a bit of your creative process. Yeah, so uh, Office Present Bridges contains poems which I started writing right from my college days. So these were mainly free verse poetry. But the main major chunk of it stems from uh, poems which I have, I have written for online poetry competitions. So this uh, participating in online poetry competition really uh, made me more organized. Because when you are participating in a competition, you have a deadline. So you, you beat procrastination in that way. So, uh, and many of the poems which I have included in the book are my award-winning ones or those who, are, who got uh, special mentions in, um, in competitions. Mm -hmm. So this, the, in this way, I could write as many poems as I could. Yes, indeed. And it's also a very interesting title of Whispers and Bridges. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a very light and airy as mm -hmm. well, which reflects in the different poem that you've written. So talk to us about the title. How did you come up with that? What does it really symbolize to you? Yes, uh, the title came to me after much brainstorming. So for me, uh, whispers stands for whispers on my thoughts, my emotions, which I have put down in the book. And bridges is the book itself, which is a bridge, which is bringing my thoughts to my uh, readers. So if you see the cover, yeah, beautiful also, cover as well. Yeah. So uh, in the cover, I had when I had uh, thought about the title, I had the cover in mind. So you can see in the cover there's a silhouette of a face, and I have shown that she is whispering in form of a scattered dandelion, and her whispers is reaching a reader who is standing on a bridge. So that's the symbolism of uh, the title for me. Yes. Lina, is there any, you know, anecdote uh, from your childhood that you feel now stand uh, as a metaphor of your eventual life as an artist or a writer? 
So, uh, well, uh, I can say yes. Uh, in my college days, I was studying literature as a subject, and we had a book of uh, poets and poetry, which we were studying. And every time I was uh, reading the poems, I would linger on the name of the poet who assigned uh, their work with their name. And I used to think that maybe <laughs> one day I will, my name will be there yeah. some, some, somewhere when I've written something. And I think I've like achieve that You've dream that, uh, to indeed. some extent. And a second thing, uh, when I was still in my college days, at that time, uh, Harry Potter had just uh, came to the craze. And my friends would uh, tell me, you know, uh, J.K. Rowling, she wrote her bestseller on a train. And you, Lena, you're going to write your bestseller on the metro. <laughs> at that time, metro was not yet launched, but now it is, and I still think about that. <laughs> but Lena, does the fact that Nuring your poems, your writings are out there in the world, people reading it, making you feel validated as an author. Yes, it does. It truly makes me validated as an author because, you know, for every author, your main dream, your, the, you, you, the culmination of all your effort is uh, having a book in print, yeah. seeing your, your name on a cover. So yes, it gives me a validation and also I know that my book is being read, it, uh, I'm, uh, my thoughts are reaching afar, even beyond Mauritius, so I'm mapping Mauritius on the literary world map as well. And how did you really strike that balance between, you know, your professional life as a doctor and your passion? Uh, for writing. It's really two different worlds, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, but my main motto is to beat stereotypes. So as I told you earlier, uh, being a part of online poetry groups uh, really helped me because I worked on uh, certain deadlines. And every everyone has a certain passion that they tend to, like someone likes sports. So when you like something, you make time for it. So when, when, whenever I had some time, I would look uh, uh, into poetry groups, what is the prompt for today, what it may be a, a picture, a, a word, a sentence, then I would uh, start brainstorming and writing. But who are your main influences when it comes to writing? So for writing, if I want to, to know who are my inspiration, my main inspiration is nature. I take my inspiration from nature. Nature has so much to give you, actually. Of course. When you, you just step out, when you, and especially when you're a poet, you're more receptive to whatever is surrounding you. So if I just go inside, uh, you may find r rhyme in the rustling of leaves. You may find rhythm in the gushing of a river. Even the sound of rains will give you ideas uh, what to write. So uh, being receptive to whatever is happening around you. You have to amazing. feel everything, right? Yes, you have right? to feel it. Yes. Yeah, indeed. And your poems uh, in the book, they are different themes. Yes. You also talk about women, right? Yeah. Tell us about it. Why did you choose to talk about, you know, about femininity in your poems? Yes, so some of it stem from prompts which I have written, but also it's very close to my heart. I think... Uh, Poems are a good way to sensitize people also. And we women, we, we have to make our voice heard. So in my poem, I have uh, different poems on women actually, and most of them are how women are beating stereotypes, how they are emancipating themselves. And I have also written one poem, which is Pink Rise, which is on breast cancer. And it depicts a uh, woman having breast cancer as a warrior, as a superwoman actually. So uh, in my poem, I have told them that you, they have to wear their scar as a cape, actually. They have to wear it with pride. Oh, so, yes. yes. And Lina, you're also you know, very passionate about, about this field of writing. So how do you view the role of an author in this contemporary world? Um, I think uh, an author in this uh, modern-day society, they are like the modern-day uh, philosophers, actually. And uh, they can really influence people because uh, uh, poems are really short. So people nowadays, they are so busy, they don't have time to read one whole article or watch a whole video. But uh, if you, you have a poem which is two, three lines, even four, five lines, they, they have the time to read it. And poets have a certain, uh, like, uh, the, the, this creativity to capture things very well. Like, exactly. for example, I tell you, if I want to sensitize people about pollution, let's say, uh, 
a normal person will say, okay, you should not litter, you should not do this, you should not do that. But a poet, what she will do, she will personify the Mother Earth. She will write it in the point, from the point of view of Mother Earth, for example. She will lament about her sufferings. Yeah. And then this triggers something in the reader, you know. This, the, suddenly the Earth is no longer a planet for them. It's, it's someone with feelings, who is feeling sad when people are throwing things to her. So it brings up uh, a different uh, emotion in people. Yeah. Yes. And there are different techniques that are used as well, you know, to bring out these emotions, like you've done in your collection of poetry, for example, the use of metaphors, yeah. similes, you know, imagery. So how do you view the connection of language and emotion? Language and emotion are very uh, strongly connected because uh, poets, they feel everything much more. And as a result, when they write it, you find that there is a depth in their writing because they feel the emotion, the emotional quotient is so high. And apart from uh, emotion and language, there are so many things, as you mentioned, metaphor, imagery, which contribute to the beauty of a poem and even personification, as I just mentioned. Yeah. And now, you know, you've published that book in 2022, 18 poems. I'm sure it wasn't so easy. So talk to us about the different challenges that you've encountered uh, along your way while writing the poem or then publishing it out. Uh, and how did you overcome, you know, those difficulties? Yeah, uh, so initially when I had just started writing, I had someone even t uh, ask me, what uh, writing will bring you? Why do you think uh, you, this will always will fetch you? But you know, when you're passionate about something, you don't, uh, the gains are not that, that much important, not even monetary gains. Uh, well, so this, I didn't try, I didn't back off, even though I had such a question. I uh, persevered and uh, continued writing. So uh, my publication part was mostly smooth. I approached the Ministry of Art and Culture with my synopsis and manuscript, and it was approved. Then I was published under the banner of Inkju Publication. It is a publication house based in India. My publication was mostly smooth, but uh, challenging part, if you ask me, is mainly the marketing part of the book. How you you can uh, make your book gain visibility? Yeah. Because you know, in Mauritius, uh, I feel there is a myth somewhere that people think international authors are better. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, they think international authors are better than local authors. That, that affects the readership of mm -hmm. local authors and eventually the marketing and visibility of local authors as well. So yeah. that's a big challenge. Indeed. But Lina, guide us, uh, you know, for the stages that you go through to, to develop your programs. So first, it depends. Uh, if um, I feel very strongly about a certain theme, or I have just lived something, a certain life experience, I will write fluidly, I will write freely. But uh, if uh, it's, I'm writing on a certain prompt and I'm not getting uh, the inspiration, I will just brainstorm, write whatever comes to my mind, whatever words I am thinking of. Then uh, sometimes I get writer's block too. Yeah. Then I'll just forget about it for some hours. I'll just go about what I'm doing, then come back to it and uh, view it with a new uh, perception. And then ultimately you, you get the creative juices set, are set flowing ultimately. And as an author, do you believe in criticism? What's your point of view uh, okay. when you receive critics? Yes, critics are there. When You know, when uh, you're an author, you are, you're putting your work out there. You should be open to both. Good, positive feedback and criticism. But you should take everything with a pinch of salt. Some criticism will are constructive. Yeah. You you can build on that. You can improve on that. And some criticism ought to be ignored. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also important to know to to trust your own intuition yeah. and be critical about your own work. Yes. Yeah. But when you're writing, do you actually have any particular you know reader reader or audience in your mind, or it's mostly about the themes that you're writing for? Well, uh, not all the times, but I have some readers who are regulars on my page or uh, my book. Then if I'm writing something which they recently liked, I can ha have them in my mind when I'm writing my next piece. Or else, not uh, really. 
uh, or alternatively, if I'm writing for a certain competition, then I might have the judges in mind, uh, what, they, what they want, what they are expecting. So you mentioned that you like to participate in online competition a lot. In that sense, what are the features you believe uh, uh, contribute to the you know, aesthetic and emotional reception of poetry? So first, you, you have to, there, there should be a depth in what you have written. Secondly, the use of poetic devices, especially if they are being judged, the use of poetic devices is very important, like metaphors, similes, and uh, the use of even refrains, uh, of fetches you bonus points. And also, like I mentioned, which, which is part of my book, the use of poetic forms, because poetic forms do have both old and new poetic forms. Because this is my own personal experience, I have uh, noticed that poems which, uh, which I've uh, submitted in competition and they, are, they have followed a certain uh, uh, syllabic scheme, a certain rhyming schemes, they are, the, these are the poems which have got special mentions or even first prize. So these are the things you can keep in mind for those who want to participate in online poetry competitions. But Lena, have you actually enjoyed meeting your readers and promoting your work? Yes, I do. So one way I have been promoting my work is doing uh, videos. I have been doing online poetry recitals, which I have on my YouTube channel. This is a way for me to reach out to uh, readers who, you know, some people are not visual, uh, they, they are not uh, into reading that much, but they are more into seeing a video. So this is for that uh, audience. You have to be flexible nowadays. And uh, yes, my readers, uh, I like re uh, uh, meeting them, of course. And when, whenever I meet them, they, I get some feedback about uh, my book. Sometimes they, they contact me by WhatsApp. I even, I even had one friend whom I sent a book and she had read it in one day. And I had sent it to her in the morning and in the, at night she told me that she had read the whole book. And she even had some favorite poems which she, she sent me. She's a doctor, so she, her favorites were uh, COVID-related poems. <laughs> but now what's next then? Do you intend to write a short story? Yes, currently I'm uh, working on a short story collection. It will be a uh, suspense thriller. And uh, since I believe in brevity, it will be a collection of flash fiction. Because nowadays no one has the time, and even I don't have the time to write long pieces. So it will be a collection of flash fiction with a twist in each story. We are actually drawing towards the end of this episode. But uh, before that, Lina, Share with us your favorite poem uh, in this collection of poetry. Read, um, it, read it to us. Yes, so uh, I will read a short poem. It's actually a Dequain. A Dequain is a poem with 10 lines and each line has exactly 10 syllables. So the poem is titled Let It Go. On the stage of the play titled Light, the string of puppets is pulled at random. One day, you land in an untimely stripe. The next day, you earn a whole new fandom. The wheel turns in some ways you can't fathom. So if someone hurt you long ago, the grief and revenge you should abandon. Forgive the ignorant and let it go. Burden lifted, you find a newfound glow. With this boon, you spiritually grow. So beautifully written, Lena. I love it. Thank and you. Uh, any message you would like to give to will-be authors who, you know, want to explore this field of writing? So first advice is to read. You have to read a lot. If you want to write well, you have to read a lot. And second, write. And don't uh, uh, try to stop. If someone is telling you that you know the, your word is your work is not good enough, or that's not uh, something which is appropriate for your age or something, you should write. You should persevere, write, and take the leap. Take the leap. You have to be prepared to put your work out there for people to judge. Also, yeah. so one advice I would uh, I would give them is you know joining online poetry uh, poetry groups is a very good idea. It makes you more organized. And your work is judged by people on an international level also. So you get a feedback. Feedback is very important and it is very boosting as well. So if you have one poem which has got a special mention, 
it gives you such a boost, you know, and you want to, that then it's a cycle. You write, publish, get feedback, and you do the same thing with a renewed vigor. Thank you so much, Rina, for these wise words. It was such a delight to have you on the set tonight and learn more about your passion for creative writing. Thank you so much, Koyal. Dear viewers, we have not come to the end of this episode. Thank you for your time. We hope to catch you next week at the same time, same channel. Have a great evening.